when uh, Jeff had uh, come up with the script idea and came to me and said, you know, what do you think? And I thought it was a cool project. It was fantasy based, something that I love. And uh, we've got a great, you know, group of people here in the Tampa Bay area, cast and crew who, you know, uh, helped out and made it uh, a lot of fun to work on. Can I ask you guys another question before you move on? Props and wardrobe, excellent. What did you do, who did it? Uh, combination of a lot of people. Um, some of them are in, in the audience. Stand uh, up, Br stand up. Bridget. Bridget did a lot of our costumes. Thank you, Bridget. Uh, Josh also uh, did a lot of our costumes in the last scene. He's a freshman Renaissance fan, just coming out, right? <laughs> um, Brian Johnson did uh, a lot of our guns and, and props in the movie. Uh, the sword fight was Ben Floyd, who I don't think is here. I think he's in California, but he did all our sword master fighting stuff, um, fight choreography. And uh, it, it, I mean, there's like over a hundred people involved in the film. It's just great. It started out as a four minute super trailer and expanded <laughs> into this enormous 17 minute kind of part one of a web series. Okay, and for us, the uh, film kind of started with, uh, we both like ghost tours. Who here has ever been on a ghost tour? Yeah. Okay, so you know it's great people watching, right? And I think what fascinated me was just the idea of um, those people and what their expectations were, and uh, kind of combining that with the fact that I just really wanted to do a film with actual actors. My previous one had gone the festival route, but it was an experimental film, uh, kind of a visual uh, uh, poem. And after that, I got that out of my system. I just really wanted the experience of working with actors. And boy, did I ever. I just like the ultimate uh, uh, cast. So uh, we were just very, very fortunate. Suzanne, how'd you find your actors? Um, we also were very blessed with Kathy Laughlin. Gary um, knew Kathy and shared the script with her. And when she saw the script, she said, I know you guys have no budget because we did all this out of our own bank account with a very small Indiegogo campaign. Thank you to those who contributed. Um, but she said, you really have to get SAG actors. And we were like, we can't afford SAG, SAG actors. She was like, I'll help you find it. And she helped cast it. Um, and when we Gary cut together the uh, clips, the video clips from the casting, and we knew right then when we cut Ricky and Jeff and Kristen together that it was going to work. And it was fabulous. And thank you guys so much for doing it with us. We had no bathrooms. We shot, and it was 90 degrees in Ebor with no bathrooms. And no one had to pee because you sweat so much. So thank you guys for bearing with us. Suzanne, before you, before you look over that mic, how difficult was it hiring SAG actors? Was it a royal pain, or was it easier than you thought? It was way easier than I thought. The hardest part was doing math for your like pensions and stuff and I got that wrong but they quickly told me I got it wrong and I had to write another little check but it was actually really easy you just have to fill out the paperwork so don't be afraid and there's a special clause for ultra low budget no budget films so try it you'll like it you'll get these great guys and gals thank you let's open it up for questions here we go who's first I'll give you another question while people are waiting to think of their question go ahead when is part two <laughs> Uh, well, we are we're really excited about doing some more episodes, and uh, we have to raise money, a little bit of money. We have a couple people that are interested in investing, but I think we're going to do another Indiegogo campaign, so if you're interested, we'll uh, send out notes on the Facebooks and social medias. Any? Facebook is skyshipchronicles.com. Any? It's from skyshipchronicles, not that. Pardon me. Anybody on the move, don't forget to vote as you go out. The instructions are on the wall. Question, yes, nice and loud. Yeah, a funny story, that was actually a warehouse owned by the uh, company I work for, Spectrum, right down the street in uh, Channelside, and that was an Ebor, and uh, it was just uh, it was kind of this perfect, just creepy, cavernous space that uh, really was part of the inspiration for the film. Um, we had it for a while, and I just knew that I wanted to shoot something in there someday, and as the idea started to form, it just became essential that that was the, uh, that was the main space. Uh, totally made up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny you ask that because I considered initially weaving in some, some local lore and some real factual stuff, but um, it, you know, you just wanted something that kind of um, eased into the story in, in quick format, and so I just needed story, you know, a story that I could tell quickly where it didn't become the story into itself. Thank you. Question on the side. Near future kind of idea 
Um, do you have any plans to explore that universe further, say in a, a sequel or a prequel or something along these lines? Um, we actually are uh, working with the writer. Um, we developed a series treatment that we are pitching. Uh, originally, I actually have been lucky enough uh, when I moved to um, Los Angeles, I got um, an internship and I'm one of the um, directors of a distribution company and they've been helping me. Um, the original plan was the web series, but they told me to try to get um, a one hour drama. So we've been meeting with um, different execs for that. She likes the concept of expanding on the characters. That's excellent. Oh yeah, like um, the character that I play is actually only about two episodes. The main um, characters are Will, which you don't know from the short, but he actually is on um, when um, Anthony says, oh, that's not, the, oh, that's not the one. It's because he's actually looking for Will. And um, Ricky's actually not dead. <laughs> so he, um, he brings people. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm spoiling too much of it, but it's not. The point is, it's going to be a series, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I talk too much. Oh. No, you don't. Thank you very much. Next question. Yes, sir. <laughs> I already knew that. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Right here? Yep. Uh, yes. Um, my question is for the Udetta. Now, in the, in the scene where the, where the two travelers uh, come across a, a field uh, full of uh, army, army uh, planes, uh, tanks, and equipment, how do you, were those, uh, were those equipment uh, yours, or do you happen to set found? Good question. Um, I know the answer. However, I'm going to pass it over to Anthony because actually I met Anthony. He's a local actor in El Paso, Texas, and he knows all of the history about El Paso. And I want he will be the best person to answer. Basically, if you if you ever saw the movie Courage Under Fire with Meg Ryan, and that was the whole set where they filmed. Uh, it's uh, it's called Cattleman's Ranch and it's on the outskirts of El Paso, Texas, and uh, all of that military equipment there was what was left by the uh, production company when they wrapped on uh, Courage Under Fire. So uh, it is now a film set out there. They take tours and all that stuff, so they were lucky enough when uh, they, Grace connected with me for filming there in El Paso, and she connected with the uh, location scout. He handled all that stuff, so all of that set, uh, all that stuff is a set from Courage Under Fire. Just make sure you always, um do legal work though, you have to do clearance, <laughs> clearances for some of the, so I'm also, I also do that too, but. Did Ricky have clearance when he was stealing the gasoline? <laughs> this <Just> clever. <laughs> Christian, we know where the other two locations were, where did you guys primarily shoot? Um, we, well, I'll let Jeff answer that because he got a lot of locations. Uh, we shot uh, all over the great, greater Tampa Bay area. The farthest, actually, we shot was Tavares, Florida, which is where the steam train is. It's uh, one of the last operating steam trains. It was in uh, 312, 310 Yuma and uh, Abraham Lincoln Empire Hunter. Um, they actually just said, hey, sure, give us some footage and do, shoot all day. We, we shot for three hours. I think he gave us three hours. Um, we shot at the Tampa Union Station, which is with the, the train station that he runs into where they run into each other. Uh, four of the scenes were shot at Lightwave Studios, which is Christian and mine's studio, uh, the post office, the first scene and the last scene. Um, so we were very lucky. And then uh, the, the combat scene was in Mirror Lake Public Library, which is in downtown St. Petersburg, right in the courtyard. So we, we kind of know a lot of the, you know, uh, uh, St. Pete Film Commission and the Tampa, uh, Tampa Film was in tech, integral in helping us get out get Thank you, Lisa. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Next question. Way, way in the back, Jeanette. Grace, let's start with you. Um, so I'm trying to break into series. Um, I have a project called The Reserve that I'm working on with the director of um, Odessa. We had a, already about three rewrites with anonymous content. They are managers and producers of True Detective. So we're getting closer and closer to the uh, pilot. And then I'm also working on a comedic web series with Kimberly McVicker, who's also from Performer Studio Workshop. 
and it seems like I'm getting the most attention for that because I'm working with a former porn star that lives with <laughs> Charlie Sheen. And <laughs> I was like, forget that I just produced another short with an Oscar winner, you know, just, everything is about the porn star. And then of course, Odessa um, for the series as well. Uh, we're looking at trying to do a couple more episodes of Skyship Chronicles, and um, I'm working on a really cool pirate short with Iris Saunders, who happens to be right there. So we just filmed that last weekend. Um, we filmed that in Fort DeSoto um, with a whole crew of pirates in the middle of the woods last weekend, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, besides uh, Skyship, uh, just writing. I mean, constantly writing. I'm, I'm writing a feature and a short. Short is kind of a fantasy circus kind of thing, and then I've got a feature that's kind of like a poker, comedy, caper film. So it's, yeah, so it's various and sundry kind of thing. I'm going to Disney World. And he's taking Lance, and he's taking Lance with him. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I have a few uh, kind of narratives in this vein in mind, but I think my next project is actually going to be a uh, uh, stop motion film and, and very different uh, from this one in, in tone, very heartfelt and kind of a sentimental piece. So uh, yeah, I'm not consistent in my body work, but I want to do it. So that will probably be next. And I'll help whatever he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll go to Disney World. Next question up in the back. Uh, the sir, there you go, right? White shirt. Uh, it was kind of a combination of, of many things. I mean, the, the original seed idea was just um, having this, this this power source and this kind of unwitting guy played by Daniel, wonderfully. Um, he kind of, there's these two people, and originally they were time travelers. We kind of condensed the story, believe it or not. Um, and basically, it's just the, the, the communion of all, of all these characters kind of come together in this tiny little town in Wichita. And then we just kind of expanded on it. Christian and I kind of rewrote it and rewrote it from a like a little three-page kind of like said super trailer and just kind of added on scenes. In fact, Christian wrote you wrote most of the last scene, which was he was also Yeah, I wrote myself a part in. <laughs> Jeff was like, no. I was like, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna be in here. So um Clint Eastwood over here, <laughs> both sides of the game. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, obviously. Funny, you're the funny you actually yeah. <laughs> not even an actor, not a director. <laughs> Next yeah. question. Yes. Yeah, that was a special effect. Um, we had uh, actually a guy that worked on my last movie. He's from Argentina. Did the the skyship effects on that. Um, there's a lot of great people in the audience. Josh, you know, up there. Um, I don't know if Rios is here. Who else is on the uh, uh, Don. 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 Don did the drone. Don did the drone. The little robot guy that flew in there. Yeah, so that was awesome. We had a lot of great people, all from most of them local, except for Jack from Argentina. Last question. Yes, sir. I do tend to um, pick scripts that have some type of social commentary. I don't want to be the type of person that says, this is my view and you should do this this way as well. However, I do like to pick um, topics so it can start a conversation, definitely. Because I just, I find that more interesting than just, even the one that I'm working with, the porn star, there's a commentary, <laughs> there's commentary about females and their, um, choices and everything. So, all right, you guys, let's give it up for them. Great job, you guys, and also for Burnt Grass and Nostalgia as well. Don't forget to vote on your way out. Enjoy the party. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet, you want to do it. It's going to be a great time. Free food, open bar. Don't miss it. And thank you for supporting the 2015 Suncoast Credit Union Gasparilla Film Festival. <laughs>